We just came from the sawmill over where all the wood comes in. This is the other side of the wall. This is where all the parts get processed on CNC machines, planers, all your fingerboards, your necks, your braces, um, bridges, all your parts will get machined down here. This is the final inspection section. All right. Not bad for a beat up old guitar, huh? Man.
was playing this guitar. <laughs> front you can see where they joined the building together that was the uh, front door this was the my, my uh, ancestors lived here the corner of north and main they went into the side door then business got better and they added on added on added on added on and then in, in the early 1960s we moved out here the great shot of uh, Frank Henry my great grandfather and my grandfather and my great uncle uh, Herbert Herbert was destined to take over uh, my grandfather was not going to join the family business. He wanted to be a professor. Uh, he had gotten a degree from Princeton, and he wanted to go to Harvard and uh, teach economics. And then poor Uncle Herbert, in his late 1920s, went in the hospital with a stomach ailment and passed away. So he tapped him on the shoulders, and he joined the family business. Quickly, from gut, and transformed the guitars through a process of trial and error to accommodate the metal strings. Pretty much never looked back. Here's a couple of Dixons. Um, Dixon was a customer. They commissioned the guitars. They actually helped us design them. And what particularly, if you look at this guy and this guy, what you'll see is basically a baby dreadnought. And so the, you know, kind of the origins of the dreadnought guitar are, are very apparent, particularly in the ukuleles. Hmm. Why was it called a dreadnought? This handsome gentleman was a famous vaudeville banjo player. And towards the end of the 1920s, he saw the vaudeville banjo thing going away. And he said, well, I am not ready to retire. I think I'm going to take up the guitar. And he grabbed a hold of a mark guitar with a big fat neck and a tall fret body and said, I can't play these things. Can you make me a guitar that has a neck that feels more like a banjo? So we took the neck off of the arch top, which was already 14 fret, slimmer with a radius fingerboard, squared off the shoulders of our largest flat top guitar, and gave him what we call the orchestra. That's the dread. Big, powerful, bassy guitar, originally built, uh, commissioned from Ditson, without our name on it. And Ditson went out of business. We thought we were onto something, so we stuck with it, put our name on it. The early ones were 12 fret. Uh, they pretty quickly got redesigned with a 14 fret neck. The dreadnought name comes from a class of British battleship that helped turn the tide of World War I, the dreadnought. The fear nothing. Mm -hmm. 